John William is all the way in, 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 in California and uh, what a blessing. So Dr. Dr. Reverend uh, Canon, uh, Rev Reverend Canon, Dr. John. Uh, <laughs> Don't bite your tongue. Don't bite your tongue. <laughs> I have to keep reciting those words. <laughs> One title is enough. It's too loaded. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I have to recite all those. But you're really welcome. We're excited to have you today. Yes. Uh, okay. Take us on, man of God. Yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much once again, and uh, good morning. Praise the Lord, uh, each and every one of you, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to be back. Um, I cannot, uh, I'm, I'm actually alone in the house at this point in, on Mukono Hill, uh, where we live, um, and I'll be saying a little bit about that uh, in my recap. Uh, and my understanding is that I'm going to be sharing briefly, and then after that, uh, people will feel free to uh, bring in some questions, and uh, I'll be happy to respond to those questions. But I'll do a recap, and maybe I'll say something that will be a little different. My wife is out of the country, but I talked with her uh, last night, and uh, she sends her greetings. Uh, she's away. She actually left two days ago and she's coming back on Monday. But, um, you know, I talked, I think, a lot about uh, my life yest uh, last time. Uh, maybe just uh, for us to understand and for those who may not have been there, uh, just to understand my life started in a very, very humble beginnings. Uh, I look back and sometimes I marvel. Um, I've been writing my biography. <laughs> I hope I finish it. Sometimes I can't find the time. But uh, it's a very, when I look back, I really, really marvel that uh, a little boy that started out going to school without any shoes, a little boy who only had uh, three sets of clothing, as uh, we normally say, uh, because the only clothing I had were church clothes, uh, school clothes, especially when I started school. And then, which are the clothes you wear at home. And you made sure that in your dressing, you did not mix up all those. Uh, but uh, coming to this point where I'm invited to speak, and I've had many, many opportunities, I have to say it is the grace of God. And I'm so thankful that starting like that, uh, made all the difference. I said something also about our, my education and, um, um, you know, all the way from primary school, never attended kindergarten <laughs> because there was no kindergarten to attend. Um, and going on up to university, I attended the University of Nairobi, uh, the University of Melbourne. I actually did a bachelor's and then went on straight to a PhD I didn't do a master's in mathematical statistics and uh, completing in 1984 and then um, coming back to lecture at Makerere University. And then I also attended uh, my theological studies later. I attended uh, and I did my master of arts in evangelism and theology at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, which is part of Trinity International University, plus other trainings that I have had. And um, I am married. Uh, my wife is Canon Dr. Ruth Senyonyi. We've been married now since April 13, 1985. Uh, husbands tend to forget those days, but it's a very, very special thing. And maybe just to say a little about that, um, I'm really, really, and I did say it before, I'm very thankful for my wife. I met her when I was home on holiday, uh, briefly from the University of uh, Melbourne in 1982. That's the first time that I ever saw her. And, uh, by, and I was only here for two months. She was a student at Makere University. Uh, so when I met her, I was immediate, immediately struck. I had been praying, of course, about getting uh, a life partner. I just didn't realize that that short holiday was going to 
uh, find someone for me and uh, you know just visiting for two months because I was on holiday and then go back and complete my studies and suddenly I meet this girl and uh, the first time we met was on Parliament Avenue <laughs> uh, but it turned out to be a life-changing experience because by the time I left in February to go back to the University of Melbourne I was decided that this was going to be my wife and actually proposed to her on phone uh, from Australia. Um, I couldn't wait because I, you can imagine meeting her in December. I had very few interactions with her in those two months I was here, uh, possibly not more than four, three or four of them. And then uh, deciding that this is it, this is the person I want. Um, I just felt like God was leading me into it. I think in retrospect, I can say that. And then going back to the university and proposing to her in April. So that was, that's, that was how quickly I moved to capture my wife. But thank God, uh, we do have four children. Three of them are married and we have seven grandchildren. I did say that. And of course, we look forward to having many more uh, grandchildren. Talked a little bit about my career, uh, particularly um, how I left the university and then went into evangelistic work. I only worked in three stations, Makere University, African Evangelist Enterprise, and then of course, Uganda Christian University, where I served in four portfolios. Um, but I think last time I did emphasize that for me, the most formative experience, uh, the one that truly, truly turned around my life was my salvation on June 18th, 1976, as a university student at, at the University of Nairobi. Um, and for me, that has always been uh, like the reference point of everything that I am. And I use the word resetting, it reset my life, reset my uh, priorities, reset my career, uh, reset everything. My friendships uh, completely transformed who I am. And like I said last time, many people are not even aware that I'm very introverted. At least it used to be very, very pronounced. Today, people may not even be able to see it. My wife is aware of it. But uh, making me the person that I am is not something that I did for myself. And I do thank God for that. Now, when it comes to Korea, I was, you know, I was doing very well in my studies. And it's very interesting that in the end, um, the Lord then brought me, uh, after studying at university or during that same period, calling me and saying, I am setting you apart. That was really, that really reset my career. I'm setting you apart. Something that I have never regretted because I had the full conviction that this was the work of God. It was not me, it was God telling me, I am calling you into this ministry. Uh, obviously, it does not mean that when God calls you, all is going to be fine sailing. I have had my ups, I have had my downs, but uh, in all, uh, realizing that at the bottom of everything, uh, the Lord truly called me. And uh, the first time I felt that call must have been around soon after I came to Christ, but possibly 1977, but it was not until 10 years later when I stepped out of a lecturing position at Makere University uh, that some people even thought was madness. They said, ah, well, how can you throw away such a, you know, a, a career, <laughs> a very promising career, and then you go into the preaching of the gospel. But I was decided, I was determined. And, um, and the Lord, I think, has used that way beyond what I would have expected at all levels. I should say that um, 
some of the things that they were thinking about, about my career, yes, I could have gone on and stayed at McKenna University, risen through the ranks and done whatever I would have done. I don't know what that journey would have been like because I've not lived it. Uh, but what I know is that what God has made of my life through that calling uh, is something I can never regret and I feel very, very fulfilled. So my career path, in other words, was academia, then evangelism, uh, then, of course, um, evangelism, and then, of course, ordination uh, to be a pastor. Uh, although I never served in a church, when I was ordained, I was ordained and it was very specific, a request that came from African Evangelist Enterprise. Uh, but, of course, I already knew, yes, I want to end up in that. But it was a request that came from them. They said, we want him to be ordained so that he can be uh, he can be able to stand before people. And so uh, if I were to say anything, the way I dress uh, when I'm ordained, I would use the words of Bishop Festo, the man that God used to invite me out of the university. And um, the words that he used to use were, this is a fisherman's uniform. <laughs> nothing more than that. And uh, it, it has no magic. It has nothing special except that uh, for those people that feel that they must listen only when it is on, why not? Let them listen to it. So the Lord has used it, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, so the, the great impact, and then after that, of course, getting into higher education again, something I thought I would never do. Uh, if I were to tell my, my full story, I resisted, because when I became First of all, becoming a uh, university chaplain at uh, Uganda Christian University, I resisted that. Then I was asked uh, two and a half years later to become a deputy vice chancellor. And uh, I had I said, no, 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 I came here to preach. And I just didn't think that uh, becoming a deputy vice chancellor was part of my calling. But God actually has a way. I do remember when I was invited to become, the person who talked to me who was vice chancellor at the time, he said to me, how do you know that God, that this is not also God's calling? And he himself being an ordained minister, and I said, okay. Uh, I had no answer to that, but uh, the Lord used it. And uh, of course I became deputy vice chancellor for seven years in two portfolios. And then after that, I became the vice chancellor of Uganda Christian University, which I did for seven years. And so that's an interesting thing. But let me just say something. Since 2020, I have been retired. And uh, last Thursday, I was speaking to people, some retired and some uh, still in service, these are public servants. They invited me to speak to them. They were about 40. And uh, they said they want me to give that talk even to another group where, when they, you know, because they are like 150. So they just picked up 40 and they want to bring another group. And I was talking to them about re retirement. And some of the things that I said there, and I don't need to go into too much detail about it, but especially for many of you that are still in service, I feel that it is important that you get to understand the importance of preparing yourself for retirement. Um, I can't say everything about it, but let me just say this. I retired on the 31st of August, 2020. And I remember uh, 1st September. So on the 31st of August, I handed over the car, I had already left the house anyway. I handed over the driver. I handed over the, you know, the, the car was always fueled for vice chancellor. So I was enjoying all these benefits and all the various perks. And then all of a sudden, the 1st of September, you become a commoner. <laughs> just like that. It's just a night and the following day, you are a different person. Even the people that usually did my bidding, that people that I would just tell, do this for me, do this for me, it was no more. It was all gone. <laughs> it was all gone. 
my life had changed forever. I may not be able to say everything concerning that, but let me just say this. Um, Reverend, I think uh, they had to mute all yes. so that you can, yes. Yes, I've unmuted myself. So um, now, so all of a sudden, I, you know, my life had changed including the fact that I was paying staff members and all our salaries were paid every 23rd of uh, every 23rd of the month. And now, 23rd September, there was no salary coming in. <laughs> no salary whatsoever. So you lose, I mean, from the position where I was, I lost all the authority. I lost all the resources, all the income. I lost, you know, um, the many opportunities that I had, travel opportunities. I used to travel business class. Uh, University Council had decided that. It didn't matter where I was going as long as it was, uh, uh, well, I'm the one who asked them I, when they were putting the policy and I said, only if it is a journey of more than four hours. Because I didn't think I need business class and spend the university's money uh, went is less than that. So when it was four hours, yes, I had to travel business class. And so here I am, and I could travel also with my wife. Now, all of a sudden, all those things are gone. As I speak now, even my wife traveling, she went to the US and we had to pay for that. All the resources gone. Now, one of the very first things that I felt at that particular time, I think it can lead people into depression. All of a sudden, I realized like my life had lost meaning. Think of it, that um, um, people used to call me vice chancellor and I started like, you know, I gave notice that I was going to retire about three years before and uh, people would call me vice chancellor. I don't even know if some people even forgot my name. <laughs> Others would just say VC. And so then I come to the time of retirement and uh, some people still called me vice chancellor. In fact, some people would say, I don't know what else to call you. I have to call you vice chancellor. I have to call you VC. Before long, they started calling me former vice chancellor. And uh, as I speak right now, when I go into gatherings and so forth, the former not only has the vice chancellor fallen off, even the former has fallen off. <laughs> so that is another change. And uh, you, you know, the change was very interesting. All of a sudden, I'm home. I'm not doing anything. I'm just home. And uh, I can't say that I am working. I can't say that I'm getting up to do this or to do that. But I thank God that at a time like that, it became an opportunity for me to put on my thinking cup and to be able to say, okay, I think this is the time for me to reset my life. And uh, is it me who reset it? Maybe I should say it's God who really reset it. As I speak today, without going into too much detail, I can say I am fully satisfied. In fact, many people ask me, how's your retirement? And I tell them, I, I never knew that it is such an amazing life to be retired. I am enjoying my retirement. I do only what I want to do. I don't have to do everything. I don't have to get out of my house. When we have appointments, we do have an office, a counseling office in Nalia, my wife and I. Uh, yesterday, I had some people that I had to see there. But in that counseling office, we decide what time we are going to see you because it's an appointment. You can't tell me that I will be there at 8.30 or at 9. We usually say, a 10 o'clock, but in most cases, we start 11 o'clock. You know, that's how, that's, that's, uh, who would, how, why would I exchange that? Someone asked me the question that, um, do you, do, don't you miss being in the office? I said, absolutely not. I don't. I'm really enjoying myself. Now, here is the point. In retirement, I think what God has done for us is, if I have 
food on the table, if I have clothing, if I am able to, uh, to give myself the things I need, I don't need anything else. This is retirement. Yes, you look ahead and you ask yourself, okay, what? Uh, am I safe going future? Whereas well, of now, I can say, yes, I am uh, when it comes to the future. And it's not depending on my children. It is being able to invest, being able uh, to have something that enables me to look into the future. I don't know what's going to happen. We all know that. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But the little that God has shown me now, and this is a big realization, the little that God has shown me now tells me I can trust him for tomorrow. And that is the most important thing. And so I truly thank God uh, for that life that I'm living at this point together with my wife. We are only two in the house. Uh, the children usually come home uh, together with the grandchildren uh, for Christmas season. And uh, then we stay together in the house. One time we told them you are becoming too many in a three-bedroomed house. Uh, so can we book you in the guest house nearby? They said, no, 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 we want to stay together in the house. And so we have absolute uh, joyous chaos in the house. You know, everyone is around and we are just enjoying ourselves. We are holding the grandchildren and things like that. So these are interesting things. And uh, the way that uh, retirement can become a very fulfilling experience, very fulfilling. When all the trappings of authority, all the trappings of status, all the trappings, I mean, people would recognize me in the country. By the time I retired, I was the chairman of all the vice chancellors in Uganda, all of them, public and private. And uh, I would tell them we need to do this and they would discuss. And in most cases they would say, yes. In fact, they learned to come to me for consultation. Now I no longer have all that. And I thank God for that, that God has given me an amazing time. So friends, I think uh, I will stop at that point. Oh, oh dear, I've gone on much longer. That's the problem with the preachers. <laughs> I've gone on a lot longer, but uh, it's a very fulfilling life being in retirement. And I thank God for the way that he's been with me. Thank you very much. So I think for questions now. Questions, yes. But, and, and, and friends, get ready to ask your questions. And I know you can't wait not to ask uh, the questions because this is being real. Uh, Canon Reverend, <laughs> doctor, this has been real. Uh, this has been very deep and profound, just you being able to, to take us into what you're dealing with even at the present moment, how you've been able to, to just transition from being the vice chancellor to doing what you are doing. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your story. Friends, I'm gonna encourage you to ask your questions. And um, I have a lot of questions, but if you have questions, just throw them in the chat and we'll be able to pick them up. Just text them there and we'll be able to pick them up. Um, again, Dr. John, I want to begin with the part of depression. You escaped depression. Um, and again, so many people here, the turning point may even be a loss of business and, and things just go bad. Uh, turning point for them may be a loss of a job. Uh, sometimes I like what you have used calling these authorities privileges as traps and now they are not there uh, how were you able to escape depression because that's one of those things that most of the people got into after covid because some were not be able to were not able to go back to their usual jobs life had to change totally how were you able to overcome depression okay uh, I, I think very briefly first and foremost uh, I was spending a lot more time with God, um, and uh, which which has really continued. That when I say that I don't make appointments before eleven o'clock, what do I do at home? Do I just lie in bed? <laughs> what is it? Well, I used to wake up maybe five, five thirty, six, but definitely by six I would have to wake up when I was still in service. But now uh, I 
I, I wake up at 6.30. In fact, over weekends, I prefer waking up at 7 o'clock so that I can rest a little bit more. It's actually advised medically that you should, you know, especially in my age, that you should even be sleeping a little longer. So that is the first one. Uh, spending, so I would sit on the veranda and just read my Bible. The, you know, I became engaged more with God, uh, even with things that I never had opportunity to enjoy uh, before. Secondly, I'm so thankful that my wife is a counseling psychologist. And so uh, she understood all of that. She had been speaking to people concerning uh, depression at the Bank of Uganda, where she was working before, but she's also retired. And um, it's not like she did it overtly, but she was beside me. She was always supportive, always checking on me, uh, always listening to me. And uh, that meant a lot. Going out, you know, just having some dinners and spending time with my wife. Then you know that, yes, I am not without value because I have value in this relationship and my wife cares for me. And so uh, my wife was extremely important at that particular stage. Thirdly, I also had to decide what I would be spending my time doing. And uh, that's the time when I really, I had started already, but that's the time when I dug deeper into writing um, my biography. There is also a manuscript that I have um, for other reasons, it's not yet published, but uh, uh, which is on Bishop Festo. But uh, the, uh, you know, I, I've been working on my biography. I was also approached because I, I used to write devotions into the used university newspaper. And so all of that writing, and other things, actually, <laughs> there are quite a few other things that I've been writing. So it engaged me, you know, having been in academia and in higher education administration, I had been writing. So writing now is a skill that I came with into retirement that I'm building on. So in, and I thank God that I know how to type and I can type pretty fast. So that really made a big difference. So I think the short and long of it is that I became engaged so, so that I, I know that I have value, that my value did not go with dropping off all those privileges, dropping off all those titles and so forth, but I have value. And so I think uh, just to give other people opportunity maybe to ask the question, I will say that I'm a lot more engaged at this point. And I, there is no time, by the way, when I'm home and I have nothing to do even up today. Wow. Wow. That's so powerful. Thank you so much. And I hope that helps somebody here or helps somebody you're going to share the video with um, as we share the link out again. Um, well, Pastor Dennis is asking, how would you advise a young man to prepare for his future retirement. Um, what advice would you give to a young man as you are getting them to prepare for their future retirement? That is an interesting question because there is a sense of it in, uh, in which it can be answered generally, but there are also specificities that apply to the individual uh, to understand where you were in your own uh, life. When, when we came to retirement, everyone kept on telling us to do farming. Now, there's a sense in which people seem to think it's one suit fits all. <laughs> you know, if you have not been doing farming before, why do you want to start such a big project in retirement? It will wear you out. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Um, other people, you know, people thought all sorts of amazing things for us, buy land. They, they, there are even two men who came here. One of them I knew, the other one, an Englishman. And they were trying to get me into investing because they kind of think that when you retire, your pension money uh, needs to be invested. Well, it is true, it needs to be invested. But that is also the moment 
when sharks turn up. Please watch it. Now, the question is about preparing for retirement. Let me say this. While you are still in service, while you are still working, you need now to start scaling down on your expenditures. And you never know uh, the little that you give. It could be 100,000, 50,000 a month. Uh, but it can be of great profit if it is set aside where it can gain profit. Okuzara. Now, those opportunities are different. Some people have a lot of money. And in our case, fortunately, I had shares that I had put somewhere and we got paid back, uh, ironically, before COVID in 2019. So we, get, we got paid back this money. And when it came in, I took a chunk of it and we invested it. Uh, that was actually, I have found that was amazing to be able to invest the money there. I, so I'm not struggling with the payments here and there and uh, trying to think, or even the taxation itself, which still comes, even if you're retired, but the money keeps on, as they say in Luganda, Okuzara, you know? And uh, I am paid back or at certain times, uh, at least twice a year, I get paid back. And uh, I think, let me say this, it's important for you as you prepare for retirement, don't put all your eggs in one basket, okay? I am talking about that money, but I should also talk about the fact that even at the university, we had uh, like a staff association and I put money there. It was like a circus, uh, a circle, I think that's what they call it. Um, and so then we had the over 55 people who had left NSSF and that was also put in there and we collected. So we had all these little things where I could put money and I would be putting in, I think it. I was putting in, in some of those like 50,000, 100,000, that's it. But I tell you, when it came to retirement and that money was paid back, then I could take that lump sum, put it somewhere, and that money, you know, especially if you discuss with your bank or you discuss, there are now all sorts of, uh, I am not the best person to explain the various investments because they are also unit trusts are possible. And uh, someone would need to explain that. I'm not very, well, they, they've talked to me about it, but I'm not qualified to discuss, to explain it to you. But there are many different uh, opportunities for you to invest even when you're still working. Caution, be careful of sharks, okay? Don't invest anywhere in an unregulated financial, um, financial scheme. Bitcoin, for example, many people talk of Bitcoin and I don't know, maybe some people get, I don't know. But as far as I know, it has caused a lot of problems. And I think I had the person who founded it has served prison also. Uh, be careful to invest in things like those. The other thing, yes, if, you, if farming is your thing, do farming. If you're able to put up a house, there are all things like joint ventures and things like that. There are many different ways that you can invest your money so that the important thing is that at the end when you are retired, do you have a regular income that replaces your salary? So that every uh, now and then, it may not be every month, it may be every quarter, it may be every half a year, or it could even be every month indeed, that you are getting back something that enables you to live on. So that is a big question. And my advice would be getting a person who is well-versed on retirement to speak to you. I do have a talk. My wife and I do have a talk on that, but I can't say that uh, it goes deeply into investment opportunities as they are at this point. But the point is start now. Don't wait. Start now.
Wow, thank you so much, Doctor. Um, start now, don't wait. And I think you have uh, touched on most of the questions here because most of them were seemingly going back to retirement. Retirement, how do you prepare for your retirement? Um, uh, does retirement mean totally leaving your day-to-day -day routine and um, doing nothing? And, uh, and only, uh, yeah, I think this is Mark. Mark is saying, a life away from any sort of work or it's an actualization of fulfillment as you are freely doing the calling of God. Um, yeah, does the calling of God get uh, amplified when you're going to retirement? Um, I think Mark is, is, is really trying to ask again more about retirement and what age do you retire? What is the Retirement bracket <laughs> age. <laughs> okay, very simple. Retirement age is 65. I am way above 65 right now because I retired three years ago. Of course, I retired. I was uh, a few months shy of 65. My contract was ending. And so I did warn people that I should really leave. There is no use in you extending my contract for a few months. It doesn't make any sense. So... Uh, that really is what happens at that time. Now, some places use 60. I have even known some places in the past that we are using 55. So the retirement age really varies. But at the university, it was 65. That is the time for retirement. By the way, there is a, that question is there is a question that you read that I think is very interesting. Does retirement mean leaving all your day-to-day -day routine? It's yes and no. I prefer looking at retirement as a career change, <laughs> okay? It's a career change. Uh, two things need to be noted. First of all, you are not going to continue. Like I was working in the university, you're not going to continue your day-to-day -day routine in the same way that you are doing them in the university. You're not going to go to the university and start saying, okay, what do I do here? <laughs> okay? So there's a sense in which that goes away. Now, it's very important to, 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 to know that. I know that question had been skimmed over, but I think it's an important one because uh, we know someone, my wife and I know someone who was very senior in an institution, very senior. And uh, it so happened that this particular institution allowed retired people at that time uh, to also go back and so on. And this person would go back to the office, get the laptop, uh, get on sit on the computer. I don't know whether she just didn't have the computer at home and start playing games on the computer. <laughs> right? <laughs> you need it needs to be a clear cut. Clear cut. Please do not get into retirement and then you still long or you still go back and you are checking especially when you are in a senior position it's very very dangerous secondly i wanted to say that you need to create a new routine for yourself and that routine should include a less stressful routine okay a less stressful uh, you know it, it doesn't help you you have been doing like, how was the vice chancellor? I'm essentially thinking for everyone, virtually everyone who came to my office um, was asking me for to, to intervene on something or to do something. That's not the kind of life that you should continue. On the contrary, you should be able to set yourself a routine that enables you to, uh, to do things at a different pace. Very, very important. Do things at a different pace. Don't continue at the same pace. It doesn't serve you. Give yourself an opportunity to enjoy life. Go out. Like I say, I go out with my wife. You know, I just think of it and I say, I think we should go and have a meal. Yeah? Last Sunday, we, we took out the children who are in the country together with the grandchildren. We just go and we say, let's, have, let's go and have a meal. And it's usual on the grandparents <laughs> because for them, they are still working for money. <laughs> of course, they want to help. They want to pay. They want to do what? We tell them, no, no, no. We are the ones who invited you and we are the ones who are going to pay. You know, we do have opportunity, for example, 
uh, when this is something that we started long before retirement, we uh, after Christmas and also during the Easter time, we would go away from home, book ourselves in a hotel, spend time there, just relaxing. And we have continued that tradition together with all our children, together with all our grandchildren. We have continued that tradition. So change your routine. Set yourself a routine that is affordable for you, that is manageable for you, but you have got to be intentional. Be intentional. Be careful. You are not, nobody should set for yourself your, your routine. It's you to decide for yourself what you want. I hope I've answered the questions. Powerfully. Uh, thank you so much, doctor. And, and again, just you speaking into that um, was just taking me back to even people who are workaholics and all their life is more of work than, you know, being able to have a balanced life. Um, uh, and again, I would love you to even speak into that. For someone who is, who is working today uh, and they're spending 90 95% or 85% of their life more inclined to the title, the authority, the privileges. It's just more of go, 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 go. And yeah, how do you help them to begin preparing themselves to, to you know, to, to create balance in, yeah. in, 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 yeah. in how they respond to life? Because yeah. when you talk about that, that, that person who went back to work on a laptop to play games, I think there's a certain lock that had entered yeah. in their system that yeah. they don't know how to unlock. And if probably, like you said, we need to start early. How do you help somebody here? Uh, yes, your advice for someone here who is just more locked up into work, work, work. Right. Uh, first of all, we must, we must come to the realization that the lifestyle you set yourself while at work has got an influence on the lifestyle you'll have after. If you pour yourself into work to the point that leisure does not exist in your life, when you retire, you'll miss your work so much and chances are you'll end up in depression and some people actually die, okay? <laughs> Let me warn you about that. Some people actually die. After a few years, you know, they are retired and the life just keeps on going down until eventually they die. So give, if however much you like working, understand that leisure is important. I used to teach work many years ago and uh, I would, one of the statements I used to make to students was leisure is part of work, <laughs> okay? Leisure is part of work. Now, if you talk about being a workaholic, I think some people would have uh, said I was. Um, because for me, it was work I had to achieve, I had to accomplish, I had to do all these things. Because especially when I became vice chancellor, I knew, or at least I felt, I don't know if I knew, but I felt like the university was sitting on me. Okay? That's how I felt. But what did I do? In my life, Saturday and Sunday were sacred. Saturday and Sunday were my time. You know what I would do on Saturday? <laughs> and I was vice chancellor. Saturday morning, wake up very early, get into the car. My driver would come and go shopping. <laughs> You know, and spend time, and I and I don't. I'm not talking about shopping in supermarkets and whatnot, where people would be my class in terms of status. I'm talking about the market. Now, here is the point, <laughs> and I found this. Of course, I had been doing it for much longer, but uh, I realized, and I wasn't telling anybody I was vice chancellor. These people that from whom I was buying tomatoes and onions and greens and what they didn't even know who I was because I'm dressing I'm dressed very ordinarily. <laughs> in fact, I it was very interesting at least for some of them. Uh, at at one point when the realization came, they saw me on television during a graduation ceremony. <laughs> then they said, "We saw you on television." 
Christian University Chancellor of Mukono, or Uganda Christian University. <laughs> and I said nothing more. I continued relating with them at the very lowest level. Okay. The other thing that we often did, and that's why I say that you, the, your lifestyle now while you're still at work is very important for your retirement. When I was still in service, I have already told you this, we would take off time to go for dinners, to go for lunches. Sometimes there would be family lunches with my siblings and their families. And uh, we, would, we would have these regularly. There's a time when we're having them like twice a month. You know, let the, uni the university is there. So I could say more and more, but I would take off that time. I would take off time over Easter, go away from the university. Yeah. Um, after Christmas, we would have Christmas at home. I don't like traveling. We didn't like traveling on Christmas Day and uh, that hectic time. And then all of us uh, on the 28th, go away. And I can tell you, we continue doing those same things. So your lifestyle kind of continues with you. Now, the last thing that I will say, because that, that really, uh, there would be a lot more to say, is that uh, remember, when you leave that job, they will not start thinking, oh, can we call back this person? Even if they say, we still need you. And people say that to me. People say to me, we still need you. People say to me, we are going to put you on boards. People say to me, you know, we must look for this. Someone even suggested, suggested proposing to the president to appoint me a minister in cabinet. <laughs> Do you see how it goes? But you haven't had my name read, so I guess you know what it is. <laughs> So you need to understand that people will tell you, we still need you. Especially if you've done a good job or if you have, they have been your friends or whatever, they will say it. But prepare yourself to cut yourself from work because I can tell you, it does not matter how much they say they need you. The moment you leave, they will appoint someone else in your place. It's just that simple. <laughs> and workaholism kills, kills, okay? Because like I said, it leads into depression and eventually people die. Because if, I, if I'm to give you an illustration, I just want you to think that you're driving on the Entebbe Kampala Expressway and you're going at 100 kilometers per hour, that's the maximum speed there, although I see some people go 120, you're going at that speed, that's what a workaholic is doing, and then you break suddenly because there's a truck in front of you. What do you think is going to happen? Mm. You'll be finished. <laughs> You'll be completely finished. So beware of being a workaholic. In your life, in work, put in leisure breaks. That, to me, is absolutely essential. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, um, Doctor, for, for what you've just shared with us. Again, um, we, we can't always keep getting enough of you. And, um, and I know that there will be more questions to even ask. Um, but I want to say thank you so much. Today, you have treated the part of retirement work how do i prepare myself what am i doing now knowing that tomorrow that job will not be there and again it's a fact of life that i think um, we're being helped to understand pastor sir i know you're out there just a word or two pastor peter is on a trip so he's not with us today uh but reverend we have been extremely blessed and uh this is a lot of wisdom for so many of us to be able to tap into. Thank you so much, sir. Pastor, sir. Okay, I think you can unmute yourself. All right, all right, all right. 
Well, as Pastor Sir probably gets on board, I just want to let you know uh, who is coming next week. Next week, we're going to be hosting an amazing man of God, none other than uh, Apostle Moses Kalanzi. Again, just this amazing man of God, uh, passionate. He's, he's been in MPG serving in MPG for quite some time. And again, um, the things that God is helping him to, to do there and the story that he carries, uh, I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss uh, his story. I don't want you to miss his turning point moment. He's going to be with us next Thursday. Next Thursday is going to be, again, another blast all the way. I just want to encourage you to be able to invite a friend and log on for that. Uh, I don't know if Pastor Sa is, uh, is, is, is right there or, or we're going to be done for today. Pastor Sa, are you there? All right, all right, all right, all right. Yes, yes. Mm. Reverend Dr. Cannon, we are so blessed, sir, by you being vulnerable to share the very, sometimes in the parts of our lives that people never want to talk about because their struggles and challenges. But thank you. Thank you for sharing that, so that we can just hear the reality. As a young man who is not yet retired, you just make me think and say, okay, have I planned or am I in the category of the unplanned? <laughs> but the beauty here is hearing this from you helps us to think more intentionally about the future. But hearing this from you helps us also. To, the Bible talks about uh, God helping us to order our lives. You know, many people use that scripture when it comes about talking about death. But see, it's not really just about death. It's about the last years of your life or the last, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the ending, the evening times of your life. You know, when all this whole hustle and bustle and business is done, and you have to sit down in the role you sit in now to just mentor and talk to the people who come after you. So thank you. Thank you, sir, for sharing that. It's been a blessing for me to just hear that whole story. And you're a very good storyteller. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Um, Reverend Canon, Dr. John, we have enjoyed really um, your sharing today. I'm going to ask you, uh, Reverend, to give us a closing um, a closing prayer. And again, if, if, if there's a parting word that you want to say to the people here, one word that they need to watch <laughs> out for, again, just go for it and then close us up in prayer. Doctor. Okay, the video is uh, okay. The I you can, can use press it. it okay. It's on. You can put on your video. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, um, I think I I don't have much to say. Uh, said so much already. <laughs> but let me say this: that um, one of the most important things in my life has been the realization that. Um, all my life, all my work, everything belongs to him. And therefore, I need to be careful uh, to ensure that whatever I do, even leisure itself, belongs to him. And God wants me to enjoy this life. Otherwise, he wouldn't even have made enjoyment in heaven, <laughs> which we are told is going to be without tears, without suffering, and so on. He wants me to enjoy this life, not in a careless way. And I think sometimes, uh, you know, going back to the question of workaholism, workaholism never allows you to enjoy this life, never allows you even to enjoy God and what he has given you to enjoy. Isn't that the word that Paul actually uses to Timothy? Um, that God gives us all these things to enjoy. <laughs> you know, you should be able to learn to enjoy this life and retirement itself should give you an, an opportunity to continue the enjoyment, not spoiling you, but giving you an opportunity to enjoy. So thank you very much. I think we can pray and then um, um, we end this. Loving Father, thank you so much uh, for my brothers and sisters here. And thank you for the opportunity that you have given me to share with them. Because I know 
that it is your spirit that now speaks to their hearts and enables them to learn something and to understand that there will be a turning point uh, in their life at different stages. But as that turning point comes, let them be able to adjust and surrender themselves afresh to you. And so I commit them to you, even when we think about uh, retirement, that they will be able to, they will prepare themselves, knowing that the God who has been with them during the time of uh, being in service will continue with them even after they have retired. And they go through that career change and start another routine where they can celebrate your goodness. And so please watch over them and uh, be with uh, my brothers and sisters now as they go to work. May you make this day a truly memorable one, one in which they will be able to see your face afresh, to love you more dearly, to serve you more diligently, and that you, O oh God, will walk with them. Those that have to travel, keep them safe. Those who are not around here, but they're listening in from afar, we commit them to you, that your blessings will, will not cease toward them. And so, Father, continue being a blessing in our life and drawing us closer to you, that in all our activities hereafter, we will honor you, we will glorify you, to the glory and honor of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord. Amen. And amen, amen. Well, thank you so much, um, Dr. God bless you so much, Reverend Canon, Dr. John. We want to say thank you for sharing your life with us. Friends, um, this has been recorded and I just want to encourage you to share it with a friend and somebody needs this. And probably somebody is going through a depression and they need to hear from you who has been on this platform. Just being able to share this video would be probably one way you can be able to reach out. Or probably you know some of those who are colleagues that you need to send a message to and say, do you know what? You need to listen to this video. God is up to something. And I also want to encourage you, we are always here for prayer from 545 up to 610. And I want to encourage you to be part of prayer. You know what? You can't do it without God. You can't do it without prayer. We don't want to just to charge you up. We want you to be part of prayer. And I know that through that, God is going to richly bless you. Thank you so much and have a blessed day. I'm going to be recognizing most of you. Thank you for showing up here on the Daniel's Prayer Fellowship.